Warning. Silica powder is a very dangerous and toxic chemical when inhaled, the experiment should be performed in a well-ventilated area or in a fume hood. Gloves, goggles, and lab coat are absolutely mandatory. Column chromatography is an analytical chemistry technique used for the separation, identification, and quantification of the main components of a sample. This technique is usually employed by organic chemists in order to purify the product of a reaction or in order to isolate a given component from a sample. Any chromatographic technique is based on the interactions between the analyte and the two different phases, the stationary phase, and the mobile phase. The stationary phase is, usually silica gel or alumina. However sometimes starch or cellulose are also used, in some cases the stationary phase can be designed to separate different enantiomers, this is known as chiral column chromatography, the mobile phase is also known as iluent and it is usually a mixture of solvents with different polarity, the most common ones are ethyl acetate hexane mixtures, the more polar is the analyte, the stronger it will interact with the stationary phase and so the slower the flow rate across the column, Thus if the analyte is mainly nonpolar it will hardly interact with the stationary phase and so the flow rate across the column will be higher. On the other side, as the polarity of the eluent increases the interaction with the analyte is stronger and so the flow rate of the analyte across the column increases. In this experiment we will perform a simple demonstration on how to separate two organic dyes, fluorescein and safranine. Materials and reagents required. A chromatography column. Silica powder TLC plates, optional Organic dyes Iluents of different polarity, ethanol, acetone, petroleum ether Test tubes Small air compressor, optional First, the column is secured in a lab stand, then a small cotton ball is packed at the bottom of the column, it is important not to pack it too hard, if not the flow will be extremely slow, Chromatography columns are quite expensive and difficult to achieve, alternatively we can use other lab equipment as a chromatography column such as a burette, however all my burettes have a so small diameter which is not good for macro scale column chromatography, in my case I have found that a common addition funnel works perfectly fine as a column, some chemists add a small layer of sand after packing the cotton ball, in my opinion this step is optional. Now we weigh a given amount of silica powder. There are some rules to estimate the amount that you will need for the chromatography, in my case I use about 8 grams of silica powder, the silica powder can be obtained by grinding silica kitty litter, this must be done in a well ventilated area and with safety cautions as, silica powder is quite dangerous, in professional labs silica 60 is typically used as stationary phase, the eluent, ethanol in this case, is then added to the silica powder, the powder is then gently stirred until a slurry is formed. The slurry is then poured into the chromatography column. The stopcock is then opened and the column is kicked with a rubber tube. This step is extremely important in order to eliminate any air bubble that might be trapped in the stationary phase producing a poor separation of the components of the samples. Some air pressure can be applied by flushing air through the column, this will accelerate the packing of the stationary phase. Once all the stationary phase is completely settled down we can load the sample, there are two main types of loading, dry loading and wet loading. In this case we will use wet loading. The eluent is drained out until the eluent front is almost coincident with the stationary phase level. In the meantime the sample is prepared by mixing equal volumes of the two organic dyes. Using a pipette the sample is uniformly added to the column. Now the sample is let to enter into the column. This should be done as fast as possible in order to avoid band broadening, this step can be forced by applying some air pressure through the column. Once the sample has entered the column, fresh solvent is added with care, 
trying not to disturb the surface of the silica gel, alternatively a layer of sand can be added to avoid this disturbance. Then the mobile phase coming out of the end of the column is collected in small test tubes, in this case the chromatography can be followed by the color of the solution coming out from the column, in the case of colorless analytes, the chromatography is typically followed via TLC, pressure can be applied to accelerate this process, this is known as flash chromatography. You can clearly see how the different dyes spread out through the column at different rates as a function of their polarity. Both compounds are fluorescent, this can be seen under the UV light. Here you can see how the fluorescein is collected in the first tubes and the safranine in the last ones, achieving thus the separation of the different compounds. Here you have a time lapse on how the safranine is eluded out from the column. Once the safranine was completely eluded out from the column, the stopcock was closed and the result is the following one. You can clearly see that we have successfully separated the two organic dyes, let's see it under the UV light. The content of the most representative fractions contained in each test tube was monitored by TLC, you can clearly see that ethanol is not the best eluent in this case as both compounds spread out of the column at pretty much the same rate, but for a demonstration is fine. Theoretically the ideal eluent is the one that achieves a RF value for the analyte in between 0.3 and 0.4, this is usually tested via TLC. Thanks for watching.